All right, it's Terzuola Day here. Um, <clears throat> one of the very first expensive pocket knives that I uh, noticed and that I, I really wanted but couldn't afford uh, was the Microtech uh, Terzuola, which is a design that came out a couple decades ago um, that... Uh, was basically the the Terzuola Advanced uh, Combat Tactical Folder. Uh, there's this manual version of his knife, uh, except that Microtech Microtech uh, created an auto version of it with a a bolster lock, a bolster actuated automatic opening mechanism. So you'd press down on the bolster and it would it would uh, make the side opening automatic knife uh, flip out. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't know anything about Bob Terzuola, um, but I saw that knife and I thought, that looks really well designed. And, uh, I wanted one, couldn't afford it, still can't afford it. <laughs> uh, and of course, since then I've seen a lot of his designs. Um, he, uh, he's a custom knife maker. Right, um, and you'll see his one-off custom knives come up uh, for sale once in a while, and they're usually thousands of dollars. Um, Protech right now uh, is doing a, a collaboration with him where they're uh, releasing uh, it's this it's the ACTF automatic. It's a button actuated uh, side opening automatic. Um, and they're around five hundred dollars. Um, it's pretty expensive, but not not as uh, unobtainable as those Microtechs. Um, and they they come out with a sort of a new new color handle or new uh, cosmetically different model every uh, you know six months or a year or something like that. And they've been doing that for a little while. Um, That's also uh, a little bit out of my out of my price range. Um, although, if I had just bought one of those, maybe I wouldn't have bought all of these. Uh, this adds up to more than than five hundred bucks for by a long shot. Um, but yeah, I've been a fan of uh, of Terzuola's, uh designs for a while, and I wanted to show you some of the uh, the obtainable. Bob Terzuola knives that uh, have been production models, not not custom uh, and not automatics. Um, so these are all manual uh, fixed blades or, or manual folders, um, and they're all production models. Um, so let me start out start out with the newest one. Uh, this is uh, Terzuola's own. Uh, brand. Uh, this is just launched, um, and this is they're calling this model uh, the ATCF Light, and um, this is what you get. All right, you get the uh, the little uh, dragon logo on a pouch. And here's the knife itself. Okay. G10 handle scales. There's the dragon logo on the pivot. Okay. Uh, this comes in a number of different colorways. Um, I'm actually sending this one back because it's got a little black stain on the uh, G10. It arrived that way. Just a little dot there, which you know, not a not a super big deal, but. If I'm going to buy a knife full price, uh, brand new, I, I want it to arrive in pretty much pristine new condition. And this one has got uh, a little, uh, little blemish on it. So I'm going to send it back. But uh, it's not a huge deal. Um, this is the, um, uh, I think they're calling this the tan. 
Desert Tan G10. In this light, it looks almost green, but uh, it, it is not the green model. Um, they have it in green and black. They've got some with the, uh, this, this blade finish and some with um, a black blade finish. Uh, it's Nitro V blade steel on this guy, which is um, it's a, a traditional ingot formed uh, steel. Pretty well balanced. Notice that it's not an expensive steel. It's a, it's a mid, mid-tier steel. Um, it's somewhat similar to 14C 28N. Um, it's real thin. Uh, it's got a deep carry pocket clip that's mounted, you know, pretty much right on the back of the scale uh, or the liner, really. Uh, and it's reversible. And that blade is just three inches. And um, it, you know, it's hard to tell in, in uh, without a lot of context, but <clears throat> like here, here's a model that you might be familiar with. This is the Hogue uh, Deca, right? Which is not a, not a big knife, but, uh, but it's, it's bigger. Right, so this is a pretty small knife. This this Terzuola. Uh the name, by the way, uh, I've heard people pronounce Terzuola several different ways. I've heard people say Terzula, Terzola. Um, I'm pronouncing it the way that I heard him pronounce it uh, in a video that you can still access on the CRKT website. He does, he's designed a few knives. Uh, for CRKT, um, they're all out of production now, but they still have archived on on their website um, a video of him doing a walkthrough of some of those designs. And he introduces himself, and he says that his name is Bob Terzuola, Terzuola, right? Four syllables. So that's that's what I'm going to say. Um, all right. So that's the. The newest and the smallest, um, the ATCF Lite. Uh, those retail for $99, and they're available from Blade HQ right now. Uh, I, and I haven't seen them anywhere else yet, but I imagine that they will be available through other retailers as well. Um, those are made in China. All right. Um, a lot of my Terzuola knives are made in Italy. Um, he has done collaborations with um, a number of companies. I don't have uh, all of them. I don't have all of the production Terzuolas by a long shot. Um, I don't have any of those collaborations with Spyderco. He's done a couple models with Spyderco. I would love to have those in my collection, but uh, I don't yet. Um, but. Uh, let me, let me walk you through some of these Italian ones. Um, so the MKM clap uh, came out um, a couple of years ago. This is, you know, one of the uh, popular models that, um, uh, you know, has, has been available and is still available uh, from MKM. MKM is a, is a consortium of Italian knife manufacturers it includes Lion Steel and Fox, um, and um, Mercury Knives. Um, I think a couple of other uh, manufacturers as well, um, but they're all based in Maniago, Italy, and MKM stands for Maniago Knife Makers in English, which should tell you something about sort of what their business plan is, which is to sell dimes to Americans. Um, this is the uh, MKM clap with, uh, they call this natural micarta. It, uh, in the photos uh, on most of the product photos for this, it, it looks a lot lighter color than, than this kind of dark brown. But uh, that, that is, that's the natural micarta uh, with titanium bolsters. Titanium liners, anodized titanium uh, pocket clip. Um, 
you know, um, anodized titanium backspacer. There's a standoff there, and the blade steel on this is M390. It's got a fuller. It's a flipper. Okay. Uh, and it's a compound grind, so it's got two different grind angles on it. Right. Um, harpoon tip. Drop point. Right. It's got a little ramp back here, which is a pretty pretty common feature. We'll see that recurring on a lot of Bob Terzuola knife designs. Um, and this uh, has a feature that's common of, of uh, a lot of Italian knives. Not all Italian knives, but a lot of them have this crowned spine, this rounded over spine, which is nice. I mean, it's, it provides a comfortable place for you to put your thumb, you know. Um, it, uh, it just has sort of a classiness to it. Um, they've also kind of rounded over everything else about this, like the, the edges of the liners are kind of chamfered or crowned. Uh, that actually is not great in that it doesn't give you a, a, a lot of grip on the liner lock when you're going to close the, the knife up. There's no jumping on there and it's kind of rounded over. So, and it's not a real big cutaway here for access to the liner lock. So it's a little bit tough. Not a huge deal. That's really my only complaint about this knife. Uh, it's small, but it has, you know, adequate uh, real estate on the handle. Um, the flipper tab is removable on this. Um, and the reason for that is so that uh, you can convert it into a knife that is a two-hand opener, right, where you would use this fuller as a nail nick to open it instead of using the flipper, uh, because in some places, some European uh, jurisdictions, they do not allow you to have a locking knife that's also one hand opening. Um, so you could convert this knife into a um, two hand opening knife. Um, right, so there's the clap. I think these, these are uh, kind of expensive. Uh, I think that these this the, the street price for this model is usually around two thirty something. Um, I got it for significantly less than that because the price fluctuates a little bit. So if you're interested in one, you can kind of watch it for a while and see if they put it on sale or something. They they make this in a number of different um, handle options, right? Um, they've got it with uh, full micarta with no titanium bolsters in a few different colors. They've got it in wood, full wood or wood with a titanium bolster, um, a couple different kinds of wood. The olive one, olive wood one looks gorgeous, I think. I'd love to pick one of those up sometime. Uh, they've also got one in Santos wood. Um, it's attractive. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a classy knife. Uh, not real big, but plenty, plenty big enough for uh, most EDC purposes. Um, Terzuola is sort of associated with tactical knives. Um, you know, the um, he he actually wrote a book about tactical folding knives and and using the liner lock uh, as a platform for a, a, a combat knife. Um, and yeah, I'm sure, you know, that I'm sure that a lot of them could serve that function just fine. Um, but, you know, you look at these knives, they're, they're you know, over $1,000 and some of them uh, have really blinged out features. You know, they've got handle scales made out of like mastodon tooth or mastodon bone or something. And they've got little jeweled uh, features on them and it's, you, you know, that, that stuff doesn't seem to be tactically oriented to me. It seems more like a, you know, a high uh, quality collector's item, you know, a gentleman's knife. Um, and 
not so much something that you're going to wear into into battle. Uh, I'm not tactically oriented myself, but I, I like these knives quite a bit. Um, and um, yeah, I guess the tactility of it is uh, maybe part of the aesthetic um, more than you know its actual intended use or, or, or likely use. Um, all right, so there's the clap. Uh, here's another MKM. Um, this is the, uh, what do they call this one? Um, Maximum, Maximo, MKM Maximo. Uh, quite a bit uh, more steel, right? It's a, it's a little bit longer. This is a, about three and a quarter. This is closer to three and a half, I think. Um, not quite three and a half, um, but but broader, right? Um, some similarities, right? They're both drop points. They both have a swedge up front. Um, they're both flippers. Uh, this one was the uh, SMKW exclusive burgundy colored uh, micarta, uh, which came really kind of uh, dried out. I had, to, I had to work a little bit of mineral oil into there to get it to even really show that color. It looked more like it does in the in the gaps in this frag pattern, uh, kind of all over. Um, but this is also available in several different finishes. Um, it's a titanium frame lock, right, instead of a liner lock. Uh, you can get it in full titanium, where both sides of the handle are titanium, or you can get it in various colors of, of uh, handle scale uh, on on this side. Um, this is also M390, right, which is Bowler's uh, sort of premium particle metallurgy steel. Uh, chemically, pretty much the same thing as uh, Crucible's 20CV and Carpenter's uh, 204P. They're, they're, they all have basically the same chemical formulation, and they're all powder formed, but manufactured through slightly different processes. Um, Again, we have the uh, the Terzuola dragon head icon there. Um, this has got a uh, a steel insert added for the liner lock, so that you're not rubbing titanium against the uh, steel <coughs> of the um, tang. Lock up there, you can see it's it's kind of early, kind of early lock up, but that's that's okay. Um, this is a little stiff, right? Because this area where the relief is 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 not very big. On a lot of knives, you'll see a wider uh, area that's been milled out to give you some some relief. Oh, this both of these these MKM ones say made by Makita on the inside, not Makita with an A, uh, like your power tools, uh, but Makita, which I guess is, you know, some further uh, <laughs> subdivision of the, uh, the MKM consortium. Um, this does not have a removable uh, flipper tab, and the flipper tab on this is not, it has no jimping at all, and it is, it is easy to slide off of this. Um, so that's, that is a complaint. Um, some people have complained that this uh, M390 is not heat treated to a high enough hardness. Um, I, I, you know, if you can, you can tell by looking at this blade that I have not put it through a, <laughs> really any use. Uh, so I can't tell you whether, you know, it's, it's hardness, uh, it leaves something to be desired. Uh, M390, of course, is a very sort of high-end steel. Um, 
But yeah, the heat treat will make a difference on whether you get amazing performance out of it or okay performance. And also, you know, you can emphasize different things. Like if you, if you, if you, if your goal is hardness, you know, you can get it harder through the heat treat process, and then it'll retain an edge better. But then, that also comes with the drawback of of chippiness sometimes. So, you know, I can understand why you might not want to get maximum hardness out of a given steel. Uh, if you if you want to try to give it a little more toughness, so that it it, uh, it is less likely to chip. Uh, okay, so there's the two MKMs. Okay. Um, then we've got some from Fox Knives. Fox is one of the members of the MKM consortium, but they also uh, you know all of the manufacturers that are involved with that consortium also manufacture stuff under their own brand still. Um, and Fox has manufactured several knives with, uh, with Terzuola. Uh, I've got four of them on the table here. Um, let's start with these wooden ones, wood-handled ones. Uh, this is um, uh, could be a little, a little bit cleaner. Wipe that off. <clears throat> um, I think this is uh, Bocote wood, um, and this is the reverse Tonto profile. Um, this is N six ninety CO steel. And there's the Terzuola logo. Maniago, Italy. Terzuola design. Uh, it is a. Uh, it's got a thumb disc on it. Um, liner lock. There's a look at the liner. The thumb disc is removable, and these knives come with an insert. So if you take the thumb disc off, there's a little piece that you can screw in in place of the thumb disc that is basically just fills in the gap, so you don't have a hole in the spine of your knife there. Um, and that converts it to a two-hand opener, right, for the same reason that you would with the MKM clap. Uh, you use the fuller as a, finger, as a nail nick to open it. Um, no pocket clip on this model. Um, I said this was Bocote, but I think it's actually, it might be Zero Cote. Um, one of these is Bocote and one Zero Cote. Um, <clears throat> the uh, liner lock is easier to operate on this knife than on the MKM clap uh, because it has jimping. So it's easier to grab and uh, it's not anywhere near as stiff as the liner uh, or as the frame lock on the MKM uh, uh, Maximo. Um, the blade design is really, you know, it's kind of unique. Um, the, probably the closest thing that it reminds me to is the uh, Benchmade uh, 940 Osborne, which has also got a, a similar tip to it, right? With the, it's got the uh, raising edge coming up to the s sort of small reverse tanto and then a secondary uh, clip point. Um, it's not the same profile, but you know, it's, that's what it reminds me of. Um, and uh, really comfortable handle. Um, you could, you know, there's not much of a guard or a finger troil or finger uh, groove here. I mean, you do have the, the jimping from the uh, liner to hold on to, and there is a little bit of a curve here to keep you locked in. Uh, some good jim jimping uh, on the uh, spine of the blade. Um, I've seen other people look at this knife and say that they, they're concerned about sliding forward. Um, it could happen, I guess. 
that slide up onto the blade, but um, I, I'm not really worried about it. Um, and these come with uh, an Italian made leather pouch and they're, they're form fit in there, they're friction fit, right? Doesn't, doesn't just fall out. Um, all right, so there's that blade design. Now this one is, similar, uh, but first of all, it's a different wood, okay? One of these is Bocote and the other one's Zero Cote. And now, <laughs> now I'm second guessing myself about whether I remember correctly which is which. Um, this also has a different blade shape. Okay, so uh, we had a reverse tanto on the first one, and this one is <clears throat> a drop point, kind of a spear point. Okay. Um, same handle shape, right? Jumping on the liner lock, same removable thumb disc. Right? Uh, these, are, these run on phosphor bronze washers, um, but they're, they're, they're quite smooth. And they are, ah, well, I say that. Uh, they are pretty flickable. Um, it's a little hard to get your middle finger in there to do a reverse flick, but I have done it before. Uh, easier to open with a thumb. Um, the jumping on the spine is different. See that? These are both N690CO. Um, same handle shape, and this is again that spear point blade, um, but this, this time we have a pocket clip, a wire pocket clip instead of a uh, leather pouch. We've got uh, micarta handle scales, orange uh, uh, backspacer, orange anodized thumb disc. And this again comes with an insert that you can use to replace the thumb disc if you don't want the thumb disc. Um, or if you're in a place where the, you're not allowed to have a locking one-handed opening knife. Uh, different finish on the blade and different blade steel. This is B-cut. Okay, this is a German steel. Um, it's actually hardened uh, to a lower Rockwell number than the N690CO. Um, I think that they say this is 58 and that N690 is 60 uh, on the spec sheets on these. Um, but B-cut is, I think, generally regarded as a, as a little bit more premium steel than N690CO. Um, it's more common in Europe than in the US but has high corrosion resistance and good uh, edge retention, good toughness. Um, <clears throat> and this micarta feels great. You know, there's some micarta that feels really plasticky and slick and hard. This has, you can, you know, it feels like it's made out of textile, which it is. You know, it feels kind of velvety, but it's, it, it, it's firm. Right. Uh, I I really like this one quite a bit. Um, there's that reverse tanto again. Uh, this time on a blacked out version of the knife with black G10 handle scales. This has got a pocket clip, different design of pocket clip than the wire pocket clip we just saw. Uh, this is not deep carry at all. Uh, this is not truly deep carry, but it's, it, it's deeper. Um, 
This is um, also N690CO steel. Okay. Same deal, removable thumb disc. I saw somebody complaining somewhere that this had a plastic thumb disc. It is not plastic. Um, the lanyard pin there and the uh, stop pin are shiny. They're not, not black. So it's not entirely blacked out. It's almost entirely blacked out. Uh, This does not come with a pouch. Oh, well, it comes with a little, um, so th this one in the box came in like a hemp pouch, and this comes in like a little nylon pouch, but it's not a belt pouch, it's like a storage pouch, because it has a belt clip, right? Um, okay, so those are the Italian terzarolas. Um, and let's look at, a Chinese one. Um, this is from Mastrop. Um, and the OEM on this is Wii Knives. So it's, you know, um, pretty pretty good quality. Wii, Wii makes good stuff. Um, milled titanium pocket clip in sort of a bronzed finish um, with hidden hardware. That, that's a common Terzuola design feature. Um, you know, he likes uh, on his custom knives to have no visible screw heads on, on, uh, on the pocket clip most of the time. Um, <clears throat> that same bronze titanium hardware, uh, the liner is titanium. And then, um, I think the uh, thumb disc is also titanium. Uh, the blade is S35VN steel. Uh, it's that drop point profile with a fuller. Um, you know, again, we've got the jimping up here for the thumb. Uh, this is the easiest of all of the liner locks to actuate. Um, it is a flipper. Okay, but this time we do have some jumping on the flipper tab, so that's good. It's welcome. <clears throat> and I think this is on bearings. One thing I noticed that's a little odd here is that uh, there is no insert on this liner lock. So it is just titanium on, on the steel of the sort of tang of the knife. Um, which long term, if with a lot of use, could be an issue because uh, they're going to wear differently. But um, I think that's a long way off before that would become a concern. Um, really nicely made, very comfortable G10 handle scales. This comes in green and tan. Um, they did make a larger version of this, but those are all gone. Um, Right now, these are, uh, you can only find these on Blade HQ. Um, there's also a uh, trailing point version, the, the Cyrus. Um, and that goes for um, close to 200 bucks. This is 150 on the, uh, the ATC. Um, Pretty nicely made. Um, prices, I didn't talk about the prices on these Italian ones. Um, again, they fluctuate. Um, all of these are, you know, typically in the ballpark of about 150. I didn't pay that for any of them. I got them all for less than that, sometimes significantly less than that. Uh, you got to watch for sales and um, you know, pay attention, and uh, you could save yourself, you know, 50 bucks um, if you wanted one of these. Maybe, right? I mean, I can't guarantee that prices will go down to those levels again, but uh, 
I saw them go up a little and down a little over time. So, uh, all right, quick look at some fixed blades from Terzuola. Um, the one you're most likely to have seen recently is this from Civivi, uh, the Tamashi. Um, this is D2, and this one, as you can see, has quite a patina on it. Um, I have not abused this knife. Uh, I have used it for some food prep. I've cut some steaks with it. Um, and washed it off pretty much immediately afterwards. But uh, those food proteins uh, put a patina on that blade pretty quickly. Uh, so D2, you know, is a semi stainless steel, so it will, you can get some corrosion on D2. Um, and I've got a lot of knives that are D2, but this is the most patina that I've seen show up on, on a D2 blade, uh, with sort of the least, uh, cause, right? This was not like carried wet or, uh, you know, mistreated. Um... Smooth G10 scales on this, they're a little slick, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's fine if you if you got a full grip on it and you're using the jimping here. It's a fine enough uh, grip. It's got a little jimping up there on the spine. Um, there's a version of this with micarta scales now, which I think is probably preferable if you're... Uh, wanting to have a, a, a really good grip because the smooth G10 is a little slippery. Um, there are also versions of this that have a black coated blade, which, you know, if you're going to be bothered by the patina on this, go with the black coating. These are not expensive. They're, uh, you know, a little, a little less than 70 bucks. Comes with a um, sheath, Kydex sheath that snaps in there. This has got Terzuola's own design uh, sort of alternative to a uh, tech lock. It's infinitely adjustable. Adjustable. You loosen the screw, adjust it to the width of your belt, lock it on. You can change it, change the position on here using these holes, the mounting holes, mount it in different orientations. Um, Comes with a lanyard fob that I took off. This knife reminds me a lot of uh, this older um, small fixed blade that I have. See? Robert Terzuola design. Uh, this is made in the USA uh, out of ATS 34. Um, which is sort of similar to 154CM steel. This is an older one. Uh, Cuda, Cuda. Uh, I think this may have been Camillus Cuda, but it doesn't say Camillus on it anywhere. Um, again, we have the swedge, you know, drop point, thumb ramp, positive jimping, good, good jimping. And just enough room on the on the uh, handle for all four fingers. This is micarta, and um, this is the CQB two. There's also a CQB one in this series, which was the same thing, but a little a little longer, a little bit bigger. Um, I got this for a hell of a good deal uh, from CDNN, which is a uh, mostly gun. Uh, retailer. It's in North Texas, but they used to carry knives too. And um, I think I paid like 30 bucks or something like that to get this new, I wonder if it's a second or something because it does have, you know, the print on it is a little messy, but it's not marked second. Um, and this also comes with a um, little kydex sheath, and it's it's just a little bit smaller than the uh, 
uh, Tamashi, right? And then <clears throat> the most accessible Terzuola designs uh, are the ones that uh, CRKT has put out, Columbia River Knife and Tool. Um, there was a folder and there have been uh, two fixed blades. Uh, this one is the uh, survival model, um, TSR. Uh, can't remember exactly what TSR stands for, but I bet the S is for survival and the R is probably for rescue or something. Maybe Terzuola, Terzuola survival rescue knife? I don't know. Uh, these are removable handle scales and they're, they're plastic and they're hollow and there's a little room in there to store some stuff. And it comes with, you know, like a fish hook and some thread and uh, you can add other things in there to your little survival kit. Um, you know, it, it's not a stick tang in there. It's a, it's a full tang, but it's skeletonized. So there's a little extra room. And this, you know, is, it, you could open this with a screwdriver or, or you could even potentially open it with just a, a, a little rock or something if you had to, if you were actually in a survival situation. Um, that could be a lashing point if you wanted to try to make a spear out of your knife, which is yeah, kind of silly, but um, maybe under certain circumstances it might might be an appropriate thing to do. Uh, I tied a little bit of um, paracord to the lanyard hole on the bottom. Uh, really, the only downside of this is it's 8CR13 MOV steel, which is, you know, barely acceptable. Um, you know, it's adequate toughness, but not, not so good edge retention. And this comes with a pretty neat sheath. Um, this sheath has a little ceramic sharpener on one edge and a fire starter on one edge and a tech lock adjustable thing here and a signal mirror. Okay. And you um, can lash it down pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they had made it exactly this, but with a little bit better steel, that'd be a heck of a knife. Um, these were affordable. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for this, but it, it, I'm sure it was less than $75, probably a lot less. All right. So there's, uh, there's the accessible Bob Terzuola production knives. Uh, I've got, uh, what, 11 of them. So, yeah, take your pick or buy a bunch or, uh, you know, go with the ProTac if, you, if you've got some more money or even a Bob Terzuola Custom. Uh, thanks. <laughs>